When folks in business hire a new employee, they make a simple calculation that the new employee has to bring in more than he or she costs the company. So if you pay out 40000 in salary and benefits for a new hire, that new employee has to bring in more than $40,000 to make it worth it. That's why a $5,000 tax credit for new employees are not going to create jobs. Companies have to be sure that folks will buy enough of what they're selling to make a new employee worth his salary. It seems simple enough, but do the folks in the administration really understand this? Do the union leaders, who are the main ones advising the administration on everything in, under the sun right now, understand this? No matter what tomorrow's job figures show, it is vital that somebody in the administration gets this simple message. Let's talk more about it with former Microsoft COO Bob Herbold and Katie Packer, Executive Director of Workplace Fairness Institute. So Bob, did I make that calculation about right in terms of what goes into factoring whether to make another hire? Well, David, I think that, uh, you know, at times it's appropriate to take a, a longer term perspective when you're certain that the, the structures are there that uh, the employee can really contribute over the long haul. It's like it's not like the meter is running from day one, but you are right. And uh, in general, uh, we need some incentives that uh, cause industry to say, fine, now I'm going to spend some capital. Fine, now I'm going to. Uh, to loosen up a bit here and start planning more for the future instead of being in the crisis mode that we've been in the last 12 months. Well, and Katie, the question is, do the folk administration understand what incentives matter for business? We keep hearing mm -hmm. uh, kind of this nickel and dime stuff about uh, tax credits for new hires and so forth, which doesn't seem to answer the broader question of whether the economy is going to turn around so people will start buying things. Well, I can tell you this, that the economy is not going to turn around uh, if the first priority of the administration seems to be to offer some kind of a political payback to the big labor bosses that helped to get them elected. And when you see uh, rules and regulations that favor a unionized company over a non-unionized company and you start to, uh, to pick winners and losers, those are the kinds of things that disincentivize uh, entrepreneurs to start businesses, that encourage employers not to bring in new, uh, new hires, and, and those are just the kinds of messages that business doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to hear right now. Well, there have been a lot of favors by this administration. You know, starting with the auto bailouts, which was essentially a gift to the UAW. The, the with taxpayer money, hundreds, a hundred billion dollars of taxpayer money went to, among other things, giving about sixty percent of Chrysler to the UAW and and a good chunk of of GM to the UAW. And then, of course, we have the the constant visits. I guess it's about once a week by Andy Stern, the head of the SEI you to the White House, right? That's right. And you'd think that after a guy refers to the U.S. Senate as terrorists, that maybe that all-access pass might be revoked, but apparently not. Well, Bob, do, does the influence of the unions affect in a negative way uh, the, the environment to create jobs in this country? Well, certainly it does, and it has for, uh, for a long time. Uh, the fact is, we're com we're in competition with the rest of the world. And uh, today, when a multinational company, which are our big employers here in the U.S., look at this situation and they have a set of tasks to be done, uh, you look around the world for where is the talent, and secondly, what are the wages associated with that talent? And what's happening today with China and India and various other countries training tons of, uh, of engineers and, and physical scientists, you've got a lot of options. And the, the union doesn't seem to, uh, to be aware of this, that the fact is the country's in competition with these other countries. But, but Bob, as a business leader, when you were CEO of Microsoft, I mean, were you concerned about unions having a negative influence on your ability to create new jobs? Well, certainly, uh, uh, it creates restrictions, and the last thing a, a company needs is restrictions because business is hard enough, uh, industries change, uh, uh, consumer behavior changes, and you have to have flexibility. So that's what you see most companies heading toward today. They're parceling out tasks to uh, organizations all around the world uh, in a very flexible manner, and that's the way you have to run an organization today. You can't put up with 
with that kind of rigidity that uh, that unions represent. Well, quickly, Katie, do you think that the administration, because they do have forums at which business leaders are invited, not as many small business leaders, frankly, as we would like, but do you think that's that could have any influence at all in the president's thinking, or is he too rigid in his belief that unions know better than the businesses do? Well, you know, he has held off on some important decisions like uh, the what we call the Employee Forced Choice Act that would uh, allow for card check. You know, they've not uh, continued to push that in recent months. Uh, his decision not to appoint Craig Becker, who's a, an true. advocate for forced unionization to the NLRB. Yeah. So I do hold out some hope, but, uh, you know, I, I think that we all have to be concerned with the level of access that folks like Andy Stern of the SEIU and Rich Trumka yeah. of the AFL-CIO have. Okay. With an agenda that sets forth to force people into labor unions let's, against let's, their will. Let's leave it with a little bit of hope in the air. Katie Packer, <laughs> Bob Herbold, good to see you both. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it.